I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you this week's summary and review for everything that I've been watching and playing and all of that good stuff. So to start it off, as always, this week's cover image was again generated in Google Gemini with the phrase of a mutant zombie samurai in space. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. So I had a chance to watch The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, Episode 4, What We, and overall it was a very good episode in that we have Rick and Michonne finally coming to terms and are c coming together to talk about what's going on. Rick is still going on about how he needs to fix stuff within the CRM, and it looks like Michonne finally realized that he was getting, he was basically programmed by the CRM that they finally got to him. He's given up. He's not the same person he was before. So she essentially has to deprogram him and get the CRM out of him, which at the end of the episode, it generally looks like she was successful because she finally said, she, she's like, fine, if that's how you're going to be, that's how you're going to be. And I'm paraphrasing, of course, but. Um, she's essentially saying, all right, well, if he's not going to realize what the problem is, she's going to leave. When the helicopter attack or try essentially destroys the building that they're in to have it implode, he comes to her rescue They and he finally realizes that or, or like he, the old Rick comes back. So the end of the episode is one of those things where it does look like he's been deprogrammed. Michonne's um, plan worked and all of that. But I'm still reserving a little bit in that it seems like Rick might also be playing along. They, the only way to have Michonne leave is if he plays along and goes back with her and then he's going to escape and go back to the CRM. So we'll see how the rest of the episode, episodes in the season play out. But I am hoping that Rick has been finally fully deprogrammed and Michonne was successful and they, can, they work towards actually taking down the CRM. Um, I did also have a chance to watch Shogun, um, episode 5, Broken to the Fist. Um, generally, uh, still a good episode overall. I mean, we have more at the house that um, the English or the dude is staying at. Um, as far as um, in J the um, Blackburn or Blackbriar, whatever the guy's name is who's staying in Japan. Um, and he's get getting more into the whole or learning a little bit more about customs and such. Um, the servant lady, who um, her husband is actually alive and he doesn't like that he's being sent to stay there and all that. And we get a little bit more into the culture. There is a bit of a, it's not, I don't want to say disturbing, but a tough scene to uh, hear and then see the results of. So when you get to it, you'll know, but we get to see more of the cultural differences in you know the effects of getting drunk and how different people react differently so um a little bit tough to watch but uh you know overall well produced and all that stuff um also had a chance to watch star wars the bad batch bad territory so um in general a good episode in that now we're making uh, continued progress towards finding out more about tantis and um more about what the end cell research that empire is doing is all about and um, that stuff. So um, good episode there. And then, of course, the thing that made this episode good is that we have a cameo appearance by Fennec Shan, played by Ming-Na Wen. So overall, a good thing there. And I actually thought that she would have known what it was about, but it's good that they, or they introduced that well, that she's heard stories about what it could be and she's going to reach out to her contacts. So I'm kind of curious to see who she was talking to at the end of the episode. Um, I'm hoping that she was maybe, and I didn't think about it before when I watched the episode, but thinking about it now, I actually kind of wonder if she was maybe talking to, um, Boba Fett, but then I'm wondering if this is all, I think this is all well before the event, those events, so she, I wonder if she's maybe talking to, or I mean, she could possibly be talking to Boba Fett as the bounty hunter because he knows, but this is all before all of that stuff was going on. Maybe she's talking to Cad Bane or one of the other... 
um, clones that she knows or uh, bounty hunters that she knows or she could be working for the Empire but I'm kind of hoping that she was talking to Boba Fett pre him going in the Sarlacc pit. And then the surprising release for me, which I actually thought was coming out next week, was we have the two episode premiere for X-Men 97. So we have episode one, to me, my X-Men, and episode two, Mutant Liberation. So we're now in a world where Professor X is dead, the world is reeling from that loss, and we have growing, um, pro a positively growing mutant sentiment in that um, humanity is slowly coming to terms that mutants are the next phase of evolution, but they're not all the bad people that they were made out to be. So um, we have that going on and then we have a potentially changed Magneto, but it still feels like he might be up to his old tricks that he's doing this for an uh, ulterior motive. But of course the surprising revelation that which we saw in the trailer too, but it was good to see here was that apparently Professor X willed all his assets in the school to him. So I'm kind of wondering if, which the only problem I had with that was it, the X-Men took that a little bit too lightly. So I wonder if they're gonna um, progress this a little bit more and have them ask more questions because they took it a little bit too easy and they trusted that that's what it said. So either they know and it's correct or and that it hasn't hit them that um, the will could be forged or a fake and Magneto's trying to do this to gain all of Professor X's assets and take control of the X-Men and all of that and find out more about the mutants, other mutants around that way. So overall, good two episodes. The thing that kind of draws me out, uh, out of it a little bit otherwise is... Um, when you've seen the original show in SD and then you see this in HD, it still feels a little off because it looks very, very clean. The sound is better and all of that. But when you get into it, you realize that it's very well done and it's what they did before, but it's just now that it's a cleaner format and cleaner audio and all that, it's going to feel a little off, but it's easy to jump right back into it. So with that being said, um, I had a chance to visit Knott's Berry Farm this week for the Boysenberry Festival, so I'll have a link to the um, slideshow for that. But overall, it was a good experience. The usual decorations are up. They have a lot of stalls and uh, vendors around with different foods and treats and teas and uh, souvenirs and things like that that are all Boysenberry related, so definitely worth checking out. Um, didn't really buy anything as far as that stuff is concerned, but did try out the boysenberry mojito, which was very uh, tasty, was very strong, but good flavor, so a good balance of alcohol and sweetness, so definitely recommend that. And all the other things, like if you check out posts online, you know, Facebook, Twitter, or wherever social media posts you look at, you'll see all sorts of different food and everyone's recommendations for the balance and thoughts and all that stuff so definitely worth checking out but overall good weather and um generally a good time so i definitely recommend checking it out if you have a chance to go um and then of course they're still doing construction in camp snoopy so once that opens up expect a little bit more traffic and stuff there but um they started putting in some spring decorations there as well to make that look good um, so for this week's Android app review, I am actually going to do an app that's tangentially related to Google Photos in the form of Snapseed. So this is an app that's available for Android and iOS that lets you edit photos on the fly and provides, you know, a basic Photoshop style experience to edit your photos on the go in a, mo a more mobile friendly format doesn't have subscription fees or dues or anything like that it's just an app that you can install and use so if you want to crop your photos uh, flip them uh, change the perspective do some color adjustments adjust the structure like uh, color and tone um, and sharpening and things like that it's all available within the app um, it has a few preset filters you can set if you want to try that and not really get into it but it's a very detail are a very useful and detailed app that lets you do a lot of stuff on the go so if you want so the thing that stands out to me is twofold is that it's not web-based only so if you want something if you want to do your photo editing locally on your device that's where it really shines and there's no subscription fees or payments or anything you need to do to um, um, get your um, 
picture, save them, or anything like that. Once you edit it and save it, it's saved locally to your device, which you can then, you know, back up to Google Photos or Amazon Photos or whatever you do on iOS or however you back up your photos. You can use that after that, but the app itself is self-contained to your device, so you can do all the photo editing that you want, make your adjustments, and um, take care of it that way. And then one of those things that's an up and down is that it is... All, it is very good to, for touch-based editing, so um, something to keep in mind there, especially if you're doing, you know, the um, selective editing of your uh, photo. So let's say you use HDR scape and you want to have that applied only to a certain part of the picture. You do have to do a little bit of zooming in and adjusting to select the areas that you want the HDR scape to apply to, which once you get used to the app, then it's pretty easy to do all that sort of stuff. But it does take a little bit of practice, especially if you have a smaller screen or bigger fingers. So like for me, I have the OnePlus 10 Pro and, and I don't really have, you know, huge fingers or anything like that. But if I want to do something on a very granular, granular level, then it is does get a bit tricky. I do have one of those touch pens that, um, you can use to drag your stuff around, but that also takes a little bit of getting used to and I always forget where I put it. So there's things like that. But as far as, um, you know, quick and easy mobile um, editing goes, Snapseed is definitely a way to go. It's kind of the offline version and more feature rich version of Google Photos. So if I can't do something in Google Photos, then I go to Snapseed and vice versa. So it's a good companion tool for both of them if you use both. So if one doesn't get you the um, photo editing changes that you like, you can definitely go on over to the other one. So that's all there is for that. So as far as the gameplay update, um, I've continued playing um, Knights of the Old Republic. So if you saw some of my updates earlier in the week, you'll see that I had trouble with continuing the Brotherhood of Shadows mod. I was able to get to the end of the Orion level but I was unable to finish it. The game started crashing. I don't know what happened. I spent most of the weekend trying to reinstall the game um, with the mods and play and continue. That didn't work just using the mod and that didn't work. Using the mod updates and various other uh, file trickery that I could find online to see if that I could get it to work that way. Nothing seemed to quite work. So um, I stopped playing that just in the off chance that the uh, mod ends up getting an update sometime in the future to, like that's more mobile friendly for using the mod or an update that fixes all those bugs but it's been a few years since the, the mod has seen an update so I don't know if it's still in development or not but um, regardless I'm unable to play the mod so I'm conti I continue the gameplay on Korriban uh, without it so um, I'm now done with Korriban and I'm in the Star Force system on the unknown planet so I'm continuing the gameplay just to finish off the game as that Mandalorian Jedi. So um, I've also gotten the Mandalorian armor, the battle armor, the assault armor, whatever it's called. So uh, force powers do work with it. So I'm playing the rest of the game with that armor on. Um, I may finish the game with Revan's robes, but I haven't decided on that. I was when I by the time I get to getting his robes, I'll probably compare his robes with the assault armor. So if um, I like the robes better than I'll play with that and just finish off that way. But the um, goal of getting to the point of getting the Mandalorian armor and playing with force powers and lightsabers has been accomplished. So that is ultimately the um, so ultimately that mission has been accomplished. So we'll see by the time I get to the Revan's robes or getting to getting Revan's robes on the Star Forge and how I want to play the rest of the game there but that's kind of the update there and of course and i think i put it in the uh, notes for the episode but um i think because of the mods and reinstalling the game and all of that or some glitch i'm unable to go go back to yavin station to get those lightsaber crystals the mantle of the force and heart of the jedi so i've built the strongest lightsabers i could come up with with all the crystals that i've gotten so far so i still have red and purple so i'm um, paying homage to the Revan's lightsabers there and so I built these uh, lightsabers with the strongest I could less those two extra crystals from Yavin Station so that's the only other caveat there. 
So that is all for, but that is all for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on this post on social media. Uh, all of them are linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews, um, along with subscription links, past episodes, way to support the show, and all of that good stuff. Um, and of course, if you support the show on Patreon, you um, get early access to the podcast along with the YouTube version, um, add free version of the episode and all of that good stuff. So, uh, so you can, of course, do that at patreon.com slash Patel and zero one. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.